Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Guru.Academy YouTube channel. In this video, we will talk about how you can deploy DeepSeq R1 models with Amazon Bedrock custom model import feature. Amazon Bedrock service has a feature which allows you to import custom AI models to be used within the Amazon Bedrock environment. Step number one. Download the DeepSeq R1 custom model that you would like to import into Amazon Bedrock service. For this video's purpose, we are using Hugging Face website to identify a specific DeepSeq AI model that we will be using for import. Hugging Face is the website where you can find all different distilled versions of a DeepSeq R1 models. On this page, when you scroll down, you will be able to see different versions available. Here, we will be using DeepSeq R1 Distill Llama 8B model for this demonstration purpose. To download this particular model files, we'll be clicking on this link to go to the download page. Once we are on this page, click on the files to look at all the files for this particular model and download each files by clicking the downward arrow against each file. Make sure that you download each of these files before moving to the next step as all of the files are critical for the model to work correctly in Amazon Bedrock service. While we wait for all of the files to be downloaded, let's go ahead for the step number two, which is to create the S3 bucket in a desired AWS region. Log into your AWS console and go to Amazon S3 service page to create the bucket. Before going for the next step of creating the bucket, let's understand two AWS regions where Amazon Bedrock custom model feature is available. Here on this page, as you can see, the Amazon Bedrock custom model import is available in US East, which is North Virginia region, and US West 2, which is Oregon regions. So in other words, we can only import the custom model within Amazon Bedrock service in these two regions. And similarly, depending on in which region we want to import the model in, we need to create the S3 bucket in the same region. Here, I'm selecting to create S3 bucket into US West 2 Oregon region. And so I'm going to select that region before going for the step of creating the bucket. Once I am on this page, I'm going to hit create bucket button so that I can proceed with creating the bucket. Here, give the name of the bucket. Make sure the name must be unique across all S3 buckets available throughout all AWS accounts. In other words, if someone has created S3 bucket with testing name, you will not be able to create bucket with the same name as a testing. So here, to make it more simpler, I'm going to write down deep seek dash my name. That way I can keep the bucket name as unique as possible and linked to me, reducing the probabilities that someone may have created the bucket with the same name. I'm going to keep all other configurations as it is and hit create bucket button at the bottom of the page. Once you hit the create bucket button, either you will get an error saying that the bucket cannot be created because the name already exists, or you will see this message as successfully created the bucket and the name of the bucket. Once you see the bucket is created successfully, go ahead and open the bucket where you will be uploading the files that you downloaded. Step number three is to upload all the files that we downloaded for DeepSeq R1 model into the Amazon S3 bucket that we just created. For the simplicity, I have put all the files into a single folder so that I can directly upload a specific folder. To upload all the files into Amazon S3 bucket, go to the specific bucket that we just created and then click the upload button. Once you're on this page, depending on the file or folder that you want to upload, you can either click on add files or add folder. In my case, I'm going to add a folder as I have combined all the downloaded files into a specific folder. So I'm clicking on add folder and selecting the folder from my local machine. 
And once I select that, it will ask me a question. Do I want to upload all the 10 files of this folder? I'm clicking the button upload, scrolling down over here, and then actually initiating the upload. Now, again, depending on your internet speed, it can take some time to upload all the files into Amazon S3 bucket. Make sure that everything is uploaded before you move for the next step. Once all the files are uploaded to S3 bucket, we can get started with the next step. Step number four is to import DeepSeq R1 model that we just uploaded into the S3 bucket into the Amazon Bedrock service. To do that, open the Amazon Bedrock service into AWS console. Once you're on this page, make sure that you are in the correct region. I am in US West to Oregon region as I have uploaded my content into S3 bucket, which is in US West to region. Once you are in the right region, go for the imported models option on the left side menu. On this page, you can click on import model to begin the process. Here, I'm adding DeepSeq-R1-8B as my model name. I'm keeping all other configurations as it is, as I'm, I don't want to encrypt data or anything else. However, I do need to select the S3 bucket path where I have uploaded the content. Here, I'm browsing for all the S3 buckets that I have in my account, selecting the bucket specifically, and then the folder where I have all the files. I'm selecting that folder, going down for the other configurations, creating and using the new service role is an option that I'm keeping by default. If you have already existing service role that you would want to use, you can select that role as well. Because this is a testing purpose, I'm going to let the service create a new service role to be used by Bedrock service so that it can access the content uploaded into my S3 bucket. And last step would be to just click the import model button to get the process started. It can take some time depending on your internet speed and the region where you are uploading the model itself. While this is happening, let's look at the pricing impact of doing this process. Amazon Bedrock has a pricing in two separate categories for custom model imports. The first category is storage fees. Depending on the complexity of the model, AWS Bedrock service needs to maintain certain copies of your model to run it smoothly. For example, the model that we imported, which is 8B Llama 128K, will require Amazon to keep two copies of that model so that we can run it smoothly. And because of that, we will be paying $1.95 per unit per month, which means for this particular model, we will be paying 1.95 multiplied by two times, which is going to be $3.90 per month, just as a storage fee from Amazon Bedrock service. The second category is the invocation. Depending on how many times you are actually invoking the model or in other words, how many times you are actually using the model to ask a question or to get some help, you will be charged. However, for invocation, the billing is done in a five minute window period. If you scroll down a little bit further on this page, you can see the pricing example where we can better understand for custom model import. Here, we can see that for every five minute window, if you have even a one invocation within that five minute window, you will be charged for that entire five minute window. For example, if your first successful invocation was at 8.03 a.m. and you had no invocation after 8.07 a.m., you will be charged for every single minute between 8.03 and 8.07 a.m., which is five minute window. The cost per minute is $0.1570, which is multiplied by five minute window, and altogether you will be paying $0.785. Similarly, how many times you are invoking the model and how many five minute windows that invocation falls into, you will be paying accordingly. Hopefully this makes sense read the pricing details more carefully to understand how it works 
and then you can start using the bedrock service custom model feature accordingly. Let's go back to the bedrock service to see if the model import has been successful or not. Perfect. It's been five minutes and my job is completed, which means the model has been successfully imported. Here, we can click on the models to look at all the available models in our environment and open the model into the playground to actually go ahead and ask a question. It is possible that first time when you try to invoke, it may end up in error as AWS may be still configuring the server in the background. You can try after a couple of minutes and it, it will work fine. Also, pricing will only start when you see the first successful invocation. So as long as you're not seeing the successful invocation, you will not be charged for those errors. Let's ask the model to write a short essay on President Trump. And we get a response. The response can be longer, it can take time as well to fully load the response, but you will get the response. And that's how you can import the model and start using it in Amazon Bedrock service. Last but not the least step is step number five. Clean up the environment to avoid any unexpected charges. If you're only using this as a testing purpose and not planning to continue using the model which you have imported into the bedrock service, you do want to clean up the environment. The first would be deleting all the files from the S3 bucket. Once the model is imported successfully into the bedrock service, feel free to delete all the files that were uploaded on S3 bucket as those are no longer required. Even though when you delete all the files, the model will completely work fine into bedrock service. Second, delete the imported model from bedrock service itself. If you're not using the model at all, you will still paying for the storage fee charged by bedrock service. Hence, it is critical that you evaluate your use cases and then clean up the environment accordingly. Thank you for watching the video till the end. Do follow us on any social media platform that you prefer. I'm putting the links for social media platforms into the description for you to follow and subscribers. Happy cloud computing.